Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Another episode of Trash Talk with me as always is TJ O'Connor. Tonight we have CJ Hayes who's just signed a fight, uh, I believe it was two days ago, for LFA December 21st at Mystic Lake Casino. Trash Talk is brought to you again by Valhalla Combat Sports Incorporated, Ink Shrink Statue on New Brighton, Minnesota, Spartan Martial Arts, Origin Wellness CBD, The Fighters, TJ's Mom, James Clark, Sports Psychology and Hypnosis Therapy. And how are you doing tonight, CJ? I'm doing well. Holy shit. There's some extra sponsors on there. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, dude. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, we just uh, mentally getting ready for February 21st. Um, our gym's been like closed over the holidays and everything like that, but we're back next week. Um, other than that, just, just been getting ready for this shit. Uh, I'm excited to be kind of let back into the cage again, you know, let off my leash. Uh, it seems like we've had quite the layoff until the next fight here. So, yeah, I, I was going to say, try to find a way to bring that up. And you just uh, gave me a great segue. It's like, I feel like this is our third pre fight interview. <laughs> the first time that it, the fight is actually going to happen, it seems. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. I, yeah, I, too, man. I can't wait for that, you know, but uh, knowing that. Three other fights had fell through for you. Now that this fight's going on, they're, I'm not really getting into the doubt portion of, like, do you think that it's not going to happen and stuff like that? That's going to be a later question. Right now, my question is, what was your weight at when you finally got this fight after having three fights go up and down, disappear on you, and things like that? And I, I figured this question was going to be coming up. Uh, um, yeah, once – all right, so basically – do feel free to lie if you need. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so, so I basically told uh, Driller and everybody, like, you know, if I don't get a fight by the time I leave out of town for Thanksgiving weekend, if I don't get a fight, I'm gonna enjoy my holidays and y'all can call me in 2020. And they busted their asses, man. I. <laughs> Like, I actually could see the efforts and just shit just fall through. And my theory is because a lot of people from my gym are like, oh, it's because they're scared of you. Like, I don't think I'm a scary dude. Some people might disagree with me. I don't think I'm a super scary dude, especially on paper. Um, so I think my new theory is <laughs> um, if you give a big guy short notice fight in the holiday season... They're going to say, fuck you. <laughs> because a big guy likes to eat his fucking holidays away. So <laughs> so once I figured out, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to have a fight. I'm not going to take a fucking one week notice fight and try to make 185 after eating fucking Thanksgiving down in Branson, Missouri, where everything is pumped full of sodium and love and every single, <laughs> you know. So I, I I said, I'm going to enjoy my holiday. Well, I signed this uh, February 21st contract. And then a day later, I step on the scale and it, it, we're signed for 185 and I step on the scale and I see 224. And I go, oh. <laughs> I'm like, that's like 40 pounds. But, you know, most of this is going to be beer and bad decisions I have to just flush out of my body. Um, but after that, I, I feel like we'll be in a good place to make 185 again, as easy as always. Yeah. Um, and this guy is going to have a much harder time because he's coming. You guys saw him fight February uh, in uh, December. He he uh, is two hundred five er. He's a big dude at two hundred five, so he's going to be even bigger at one eighty five. But he's going to have a much harder time than me. Even though I've been enjoying my holidays, 
he hasn't been in yeah. holidays, and he's still big as fuck. So, hey, all right, you know. Did you guys just fight at 205. What the hell? You know? <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> I want that motherfucker to come down. Dude, that's a bad dude, man. Did you guys watch him fight? I oh, did. my God. I've seen the film on it now, man. That motherfucker's a bad dude. Like, he yeah. better come down to 185 to fight me. I ain't fighting his ass at his realm. He has to come down, man. And, and, and he says he's gonna. So, like, we both signed the contract. And he's from Rufus Sport, so I know he's a professional about it, and he's going to make his weight. Jordan Newman and all these dudes are his teammates. They're like some bad dudes. Yeah. So he'll make weight, but he's going to have a much harder time than me. <laughs> yeah, and, and I love the honesty and the way you – just how open you are with it because that's one of the things I wanted to touch on was – getting into the fight a little bit. We had a chance to see him. He comes from a very good gym, like you mentioned, um, you know, showed up, had a good performance. Um, I was going to ask you if you've seen it. You already answered my question there. But knowing that you're fighting a guy like this, and Damian talked about this a little bit earlier, just the insecurity with your last couple fights, does it make you feel better knowing that a guy from a reputable gym has signed to fight for LFA and that, you know, this is a fight that you can immerse yourself into camp knowing that you're going to have an opponent on the 21st of February? Oh, yeah. Like, that's the best part. Like, I know he's down. Like I, I know this motherfucker's down. He's not he's not scared of anybody. He's a bad dude. So so that's the best part is that not only do I know he's down, but I also know that February twenty first, I need to bring my fucking A game. Like it's not where I can just be like, oh, I'll display my stand up and just gra- uh sprawl and brawl like I did against Mike Waltz. This dude's good everywhere. So it's not just sprawl and brawl, it's like it's just 3D chess, baby. We're both good strikers. We're both good grapplers. Let's see who's the best fighter. Like, and that's that's what I'm ready for. I'm so fucking ready for that because, like I said, 2020 is my last year as amateur. I'll be going pro at some point in 2020. There's a little uh, preview for y'all, but um, end of 2020, I'm I'm going pro. Actually, TBA's. I'm going to do B-class TBAs, and when I win that next belt, that's the last thing I do as an amateur. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get this fight. We're gonna get this fight done. I'm gonna I'm gonna take out the Titan right here, <laughs> Cameron, and then I'm gonna take on four Titans in three days for TBAs, and then I'm gonna go pro. That's that's just the new plan, man. I fucking love 2020, and I haven't even been living in it yet. <laughs> Dude, I I love how you mapped that out for us, you know. And then uh, facing the the bigger opponent, we've talked about it before previously in interviews. Your reach, you have some long ass arms for a guy your height. Do you know your opponent's reach, and how do you guys uh, match up uh, in the reach advantage and the height advantage? You know, he's six foot one. He's he's a gorilla, so I'm I'm assuming he's got like a six three, six four reach. You know, I'm I'm five nine. I got that six two reach. I can hit you with that extendo fist when you don't think I can. And uh, I don't think it's going to be a factor. I think that he's a really good striker, and he he's won a Rev Gear Muay Thai tournament. Like I won TBAs. That's bigger than the Rev Gears, but like, you know, Rev Gear is still a big deal. Sometimes that's a one or two day tournament, man, where you're fighting twice in one day for that belt, or you're fighting three times in two days. It's almost the equality of fighting four times in three days, like, which is why I did to win my belt. And like, he's won a belt, you know, like, and that's that, like, hats off to that guy, but we're gonna, we're gonna display a superior striking gym. We're going to display a superior jiu-jitsu gym, and I'm going to display my superior wrestling because he didn't have any wrestling. So that's his one gap in the game. He's a top jiu-jitsu guy. He likes to play top, but how can you play top against a guy who won't let you on top? How can you outstrike a guy who is at the same level of striking as you, who doesn't let reach get to the advantage? I'm getting in. I'm getting in. I'm hurting this guy. If I want to put him on his ass, I'll put him on his ass. If I don't want to put him on his ass and I want to keep peppering him, that's what's going to happen. We're going to put on a show for LFA, baby. <laughs> oh, man. I just that. 
I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 um, I mean, we're talking about a card that's two months out, and just the past, you're talking about this today, and camp hasn't even started. We, we've already talked about that, and I already feel the energy here. And, oh, man, February 21st, that's a date to look forward to. Yeah, man. And it's going to be a hell of an after party, too, man. I'm super excited about that. Uh, you know, it's at Mystic Lake. Every single time I fought there now, like, I'm making it a tradition. Every single time I fight there, I'm going to get that fucking jacuzzi suite. <laughs> and I'm going to party my ass off after the fight. And then I'm going to go up into my jacuzzi suite. And at 7.30 a.m., I'm going to do the same thing because I'm going to be sore as shit after this guy. This guy's a banger. I'm going to be hurting. I'm going to 7.30 a.m. I'm going to hop into that jacuzzi with five beers. I'm going to crack all five. I'm going to smoke a cigar. And I'm just going to sit in that jacuzzi and waste away for a minute. <laughs> and that, yeah, that, that's the plan, man. Yeah. I mean, okay, so you spoke, you, you touched on it a little bit earlier about his skill set, what he's good at, and how he's pretty much as good at everything, you know, mixing it up together. But... I, I got to ask you, what do you think he is his most dangerous attribute out of out of everything that he has to offer? What's the one thing that stands out and puts maybe just a little bit of not necessarily fear, but cautiousness in the back of your mind? Um, His ability to grab a choke, man. He grabbed a lot of different chokes in that fight right away. He just happened to get the guy into a arm triangle in the second round. But, like, he, he went for a lot of different stuff, man. He's lucrative with his jujitsu, and he's been kind of balls deep in it, man. If you do your homework, that dude's been balls deep in jujitsu for a minute. He's a fresh blue belt, but you don't want to sleep on white belts, man, because some of those white belts were college wrestlers. Some of those white belts are super athletes. You know, like, you don't want to sleep on those white belts, especially the ones that are staying busy while they're allowed to be a white belt. I mean, I snuck in a couple white belt tournaments before they caught me where they're like, ah, he's a college wrestler. He has to be a blue belt. And my coach put me a blue belt. Like, and, and the same outcome came. I just beat people 23 to zero. That's what I, like, I'm a wrestler, man. <laughs> like, I score points. Um, and that's kind of what he does, too. But uh, at white belt. Now he's a blue belt. Welcome. Well, you know, he's d maybe done one blue belt tournament. Maybe. I have no idea. I just know he recently got his blue belt. Well, welcome to the blue belts, man, because uh, I'm not just a blue belt jujitsu uh, fighter. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a blue belt. I'm a college wrestler. And I'm almost a red rank in Muay Thai, motherfucker. You're like, so you're, you're coming against the worst of the worst here. Oh, dude. I love, I love it. Oh. Sorry, TJ. No, I was going to say, I'm, I love it. I, I love the energy. Um, I, I love how you can answer a question that was designed to focus on your opponent's strength with how badass you are. That's my favorite part about this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't it, mean it like that, man. Like, oh, I know this is an action I'm movie. Supposed to be it, it ain't going to just take heart. It's going to take my training, too, man. And I'm going to keep busting my ass and getting ready for this shit. And I, I, I know he's going to be busting his ass, too. That's what I'm most excited about. He's going to be ready to go, and I'm going to be ready to go. And let's just, let's just see who's more ready. Yeah. Wow. That, that's the beauty of the fight game is, is you, take, you take two alpha athletes who are convinced they're going to win this fight. And then you put them in a cage and see what happens. So I love it. Like I said, I, I love the energy. I love the confidence. This is CJ motherfucking Hayes we're talking to. Cooper left the building a little bit ago. Cooper's <laughs> gone, man. Who? What? What? No, no. It's CJ motherfucking Hayes, the yeah. silverback here, and oh. and you know, fucking amplify that shit by the exposure of the LFA. Let, let let's fucking get let's get this show on the road, baby. Let let's go. I'm gonna I'm not gonna be amateur much longer. And we're gonna fast track after that. So let's 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 go, man. Let's amplify. Oh yeah. This is this is off topic a little bit. The, I mean, I guess it's still relatively on the topic. Uh, LFA just signed the deal with Fight Pass. 
UFC Fight Pass, I, hopefully I didn't need to even say that, but for the ones that I did need to say that for, there you go. Uh, UFC Fight Pass is going to be broadcasting the LFA fights now. How do you feel about that? And have is there been any word back to you at all on if they're going to be displaying the amateur fights at all or if they're going to be showing the whole pro card finally? So the people get to early prelims like that and stuff like that? I I haven't heard anything about um like how they're going to go about recording it. I'm sure that they're only going to air the main card um right away maybe the prelims but um as an amateur i i can only hope that they record uh they record mine and maybe post them at a later date on ufc fight pass just so like dude there'll be an archive because we're not just stopping the amateur we're we're gonna keep on going we're gonna keep this fucking train rolling and uh um I'd, i'd love to have an archive of it somewhere significant you know, so and then, and then I, I think about all the amateurs, too, where let's say like we I mean, you being one of them having family that lives in another state that can't make it to all the fights. The There's been a few guys locally that have only fought for LFA and their videos aren't really out there or the videos that they that are out there are uh, like sell, crappy cell phone videos and things like that. Sometimes you get a good one every once in a while, you know, mm-hmm. but it would be nice because I mean, the the fact is. I see a lot of the amateur shirts being worn at these LFA fights. I see a lot of the amateurs selling out of uh, a few of the tables or just stacking the crowd. They have an entire sections, and these are a lot of the amateurs. And some man, of the- quit talking about me like that, man. You're making me blush <laughs> over here. Like, like I know I put butts in the seat. I know. <laughs> it would be nice to be able to have a have a video of that too. You know, at least. Uh, like having it displayed on Fight Pass because it's not the reason why they weren't doing it before, at least in my mind, is because of the fact that they were on television. You don't have enough uh, time to put all the fights on, especially if all the fights go to decision and things like that. And I don't know all of the things that go into the works with the TV, but this isn't TV anymore. This is being streamed, and this is the perfect opportunity. Man, we can that be the shit months? for them to start just streaming everything. Starting an amateur just wouldn't that be the shit if they just started streaming that shit I'd right watch away. It. Yeah, dude, like they're like who the fuck wouldn't watch it, dude? It's amateurs, it's the up and comers. The fights that I'm most excited for, I don't even care what state they go to, wherever they go to, they pick up amateurs from those states. Yeah. Those are the fights that I want to see. I like me and TJ are both early prelim guys. We yeah. watch the fight card, not just the main event, not just well, a pay per view card. Well, There's- think about it like this too. Uh, like, not only will you get like the next up and comers, but you'll also get those scraps that are like where they're not. The most technical, but that's the motherfucker you want to see on TV. The motherfucker is yeah. back and they crack it and crack it and crack it. I'd be, like, if, if, if I was a coach, those are the fights that I would definitely watch, especially the guys that man. are tra- half training, have a background, joined a gym for a while, took a fight that no one really knew, or they took some time. Like, those are the guys who recruit these independent fighters that have a little bit of skill, you know? Yeah, it's, like, it's like that guy, um, my teammate, Cody Johnson. Uh, I know you guys saw his Muay Thai yeah. fight. He, he landed. He he ended with that overhand knockout. You know, yeah. just like uh, his big brother here. You know, um, <clears throat> but uh, no, man, we've been working on. It, man, I feel like Cody might be actually better at an overhand than me now. Like, we, <laughs> like that's saying that's speaking volumes. Like, this dude has a great hand himself is making that claim <laughs> man and like and like me like all right so um that guy he fought though he had a few of those savage fights and w- you know the whole fight camp you know we didn't think nothing of them we're like nah you're gonna knock him out cody i called it the whole time second round knockout because i watched the film on the guy and i know the guy comes to bang and I knew he'd make it out of the third, any of the first round, and just go ape shit the whole first round until Cody slowed him down. And we we get to that second round, and Cody did exactly what I thought he was going to do: hit that body, hit that body a little bit more, knee it, go on that bicycle, knee, 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 and then uh, and then come in like he was coming for the knee and throw that short overhand. 
night night. Like, you know, <laughs> like Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, that, was, that was the illest shit, man. Like and like you can't sleep on guys like that that um th- that guy that got knocked out, man, he he was a good fighter and once he finds his way and finds his gym, he's going to be a fucking bad dude. Yeah. But, but he right now and still he t- is, while he stays uh, you know, garage trained half out of American Top Team, half out of where the fuck. Yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> And, the, and those are the guys where it's like, hey, dude, there's potential. Just come let me show it to you, you know? And that's where what I feel like you get from a lot of these amateur fights. And these are the ones where I, I don't know what it is, but – and I'm not saying that there's, you don't, like, there's a lot of pro fights where you see guys that, act, that really want it, all those things, you know? But there's something about the amateurs that just get everybody – I mean, at least – the diehards, me and TJ, is super excited, you know, and it'd be super nice. I know that their family and friends would appreciate it, too, because a lot of them, it sucks, dude. Like, I remember being uh, 19, 20 years old, all the way up until 20, like, 6, 27, before uh, all my friends started getting real jobs. And I'm saying this, like, this is like a year and two years ago <laughs> before all my friends started getting real jobs, you know. People were working nights and weekends, and it's like, damn, they can't even come to the fight, you know? And these are some of my biggest supporters. It's not the fact that they don't have the money or don't want to. It's the fact that they got a kid and they work that night. Yep, exactly, man. Like, It'd be nice so that they could. Life. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to give everybody an advance notice to come out to these fights uh, February 21st, man, because it's going to be some serious fireworks. Like... Like, like I, I can't even express to you how excited I am for this card. It's it's one of the most stacked cards too, if you look at it up and down. Didn't you say that Manitou Lemaire is making his way down to one seventy, so he's fighting at one seventy five? Yep. Is, is this dude clearing? Uh, that that's another thing. I don't mean to call nobody up. Is this dude clearing my division? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, why, why is everybody? Why is everybody getting out? I heard that Herbert Rogers Williams was the hardest hitting motherfucker in the division. I yeah. wanted to put that to the test next too. Like, oh. you know, but I, it looks like it's just me and Rodney Nash sitting here at 185, sitting pretty. And that's my boy. Don't get me wrong. I love Rodney Nash, dude. That uh, it took me one minute of watching one of his fights to make me a fucking fan. But yeah. me, and, me and him over text have both agreed that that fight would be absolute fucking mayhem. <laughs> and we've even thought about making it a boxing fight. That's the most interesting part, because I know he likes striking and throwing his hands. We, we thought about making it anything, man. Like, is, is everybody else running from us? Like, like, what's going on? Why is everybody scared of the chubby dudes? Come on. 2020 is going to be the best year ever, dude. Oh, man, 2019 kicked my ass. But, like, you know, it, in order to be the best fighter you can be, you got to be the best you you can be. And, like, the end of this year, um, since I haven't had a fight or anything, stepping back, um, doing some self-care, self-help, it's a lot of things I've been doing. So, you know, mark my words, February 21st, you're going to see the best silverback you've ever seen in your life, and I can fucking guarantee that. Oh, yeah. I I, I think that that's the perfect way to wrap it up. Um, sponsors, teammates, family members, anybody you'd like to shout out before we do wrap this up? Well, I mean, I guess I'm open to new sponsors if anybody's calling. <laughs> um, but as always, uh, Saints Coast Barbers, uh, best best barbers in Minnesota. They always groom this gorilla properly. Um, and Abominable Grip and Abomination Athletics. You know, they always they always send me all my athletic wear and lifting needs. But anybody else is calling, I got a lot of home maintenance I'd like to do to my house. So. <laughs> <laughs> give me a holler contractors other than that i want to thank you guys at trash talk you guys have always been a fucking blast and anytime i can jump on here i've relished the moment so um so yeah give me a holler anytime man oh, yeah we love having you on and 
uh, we've actually had a few requests for you to be on. So that, that's actually pretty cool, too. And anybody else, if you guys want, would like to see anyone else on the show, if, we're, if you feel like we're ignoring anybody, we're skipping over anyone, let us know. We're always willing to reach out and talk to every single fighter that exists. We love you all. Trash Talk is nothing without the fighters. Be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to Trash Talk with Damian and TJ on YouTube. Do not be a hoe. We are out. Peace out, Lisa. I love you. Same. Are you listening? Damn.